Good morning everyone, my name is Bart and welcome to my 5th VBA beginner video. This is the final theoretical video of my beginner series. Earlier I discussed variables, loops and conditionals. In the future I will create other beginner videos with exercises. Today I will talk about functions and subprocedures. In earlier videos you might have noticed that I always start every piece of code with sub and end it with end sub. The complete code was stored in one subprocedure because the script was very short. But for more complex scripts, I recommend reorganizing your code. Now, this is where functions and subprocedures come in handy. The difference between functions and subprocedure is the former is performing calculations and returning the value of this calculation, while the latter is taking actions and doesn't return anything. Don't worry if this sounds a bit confusing, it will become clear in an example. Let's start with the subprocedure. Let's say I want to get an Excel file from an email, calculate column C based on column A and B, and send an answer to the original email. We can cut this in the following subprocedures. First, we have get email attachment. Next, we calculate column C based on column A and B. And finally, we answer to the original email. Now, we functionally organize the work in three subprocedures. Let's call them from one main procedure, so I will add one extra sub. By calling it from one main subprocedure, you will have a very easy and quick way to understand the structure of the whole script. It will be easier to maintain for you and far easier to grasp what's happening in the script for other developers. So for now I only wrote it in notes, but let's put it in some actual subprocedures. As you can see, I created four subs in total. Three of them are functional, while one is the main. I won't put any code in the functional parts, because I, this is not what I want to show in this video, but I will show how to call them from the main procedure. If you want to call any of the other procedures, all you have to do is your right call, and then the name of the procedure you want to call. When you run your main procedure, what happens is you start at the top, you get to the first call, meaning you will jump over here to this subprocedure, execute whatever code is in here. When you get to the end of this subprocedure, you will go back here and you will go to the next line, which is a second call. And we do the same, we jump over to the calculate column C, we do whatever is, is required in here, and at the end, we again go up to the main procedure. And finally we call the answer email. All three steps take certain actions within the used applications, in this case Excel and Outlook, yet neither of the steps returns any variable. All they do is they execute certain commands. So as you can see we don't really add any functionality to our code. The only reason why I split it up in subprocedures is so imagine we have one page of code for every sub in here. It might be quite hard when you're new to this uh, script to understand what exactly is happening. While if we start from the main, we can immediately see what we are doing or what we are trying to do in this script. And if we know where the script breaks down, we can straight away go to, go to the correct subprocedure and find a mistake in there. Now let's take a look at a function. If you're in any way, shape or form familiar with Excel, then you already know what functions are. If I go to the Excel sheet and I type and I type some random numbers, I can use a formula to make any sort of calculation with these numbers. One of the most basic ones should be the sum function. We write sum, we have the open bracket and then it requires some arguments. So we give argument A2 and A3. After pressing enter, which means executing the function, we get the sum of those two cells. So in this case the word sum is the name of the function. The cells that I use in the bracket, which were a2 and a3, are the arguments I give to the function. The function name informs you on what will happen to the arguments which you give in the brackets. We can do the exact same thing in Visual Basic. We can write our own customized function. As an example I will write a function in the Visual Basic editor 
to calculate your body mass index. First difference is instead of writing sub, we will write function. Next, just like with the sub procedure, we give it we give our function some name. Now we open the bracket and we think about what information do we need in order to make the calculation. Now the calculation that we want to make is the body mass index, which is which is the weight dividing by the height times height. So obviously what we need is weight and height. So I'm creating two variables within these brackets. Close the brackets and I also give a type to the body mass index name. Now, why am I giving body mass index name a type while I didn't do it in a sub procedure? Well, the reason is simple. The sub procedure doesn't return any value, while the function does, and the, fu and the fu function value is stored in this name. So if you don't define it as a double or some other type, then it will automatically be defined as a variant. So we have our two tools now. The only thing we really require more is to is, is to really have the, the actual calculation. So I take my function name and I set it equal to the weight divided by height times height. Now you might ask where do we get these this height and this weight from? Well, a function is something we usually call from a subprocedure. So in order to call this one, I will create a very, very basic subprocedure in which I only will call the function. I create a variable in which I will store the value that the function returns. And next I call the, val uh, I call the function by assigning to the variable the body mass index function. I type the function name, next I open the brackets and the Visual Basic editor will ask me for some information. In this case it's asking me for my height, which I will write. Next my weight. And in order to view the, the final outcome I will use debug print. So I will find the outcome in my immediate window here below. I press F5 to run it and I can see that my body mass index is 21 point something something. Now, a fun thing about the function is that it can be used in your spreadsheet as well. So I will go at my Visual Basic Editor and go to my spreadsheet. In here I write the equal sign just so I would sort any other function like the sum and I write body mass index. I open the brackets, I give the same information as I did before and it should return the same information. You might wonder when should I use a function and when a subprocedure? Well, they do have different reasons for existence. A subprocedure is taking certain actions in a chronological way, while a function is something you call to make a very particular calculation. In office automation, I don't see too many occasions for functions because you already have lots of function within your Excel. But here is one example in which I used it. Once I had a large script which was almost all made in subprocedures, but at multiple points in the script I needed to check which VAT code should be used. Now the calculation filed out the VAT, VAT code is something I've put in a function. The function took a couple of arguments and based on the arguments the function would tell me which code is relevant. Functions tend to be short and always have a clear goal. They calculate something and then they return a value which is the outcome of this calculation. The subprocedure on the other hand is only a way to split up your process in multiple pieces in order to keep the overview and keep the code maintainable. So that's it for today. The used codes can be found in the link below. I wish you a good day and see you next time.